Okay, so I think we'll move on and uh, let's start working on the front legs here and we'll get those out of the way next. Um, the first thing we're going to have to build in though is this bracket piece here where they actually mount to the sides of our, uh, our plate pieces. And this is going to be a little challenging to build. As you can see, it's kind of a weird shape. We have a slot cut in the front here. Um, and the top of the leg actually rounds over, so we're going to need to make sure we create kind of like a rounded uh, space in here to actually encompass uh, the top of the leg. I'm just going to take a look at the low res version. And it actually wraps all the way around the back here. And you can see this piece uh, fairly good on the video, I believe. I'm just going to skip through. Yeah, here it is right here. Okay. So uh, let's get started on this. Just going to close this stuff up. And let's maybe hide our, our junk here just so we don't have it in our way. So I'm going to grab everything, just uh, deselect the blueprints and just right click hide selection. And we'll just jump out into the right view. And we'll just start this with a cylinder. So let's go grab one and we'll just draw it out. Okay, maybe it's something like that. Just give it some height. Uh, let's just make the radius 48. It looks about right. Uh, height, let's actually check that out in the back view. Right, let's just pull this over to the side here. And this is the piece right here. So we'll just stop maybe right there and let's just crank up the height a bit. All right, let's do maybe 43, that looks about right. Uh, we aren't gonna need the height segments, so we'll just trash those. And I'm gonna go back into the right view and just lower the sides down here. I'm just gonna give it a cap segment, just so we can kind of see where our edges are. Let's also put our blue material on there. And I think I used 14 sides the first time, so yeah, that looks about right. All right, so just kind of position it right there. Um, let's turn off the cap segment now, we don't really need it. And we'll just convert this to a poly. All right, so the first thing I do is actually quad this up and then we're going to delete part of it. So let's go to vertex. Make sure you don't have back facing turn on. I'm just going to grab uh, these verts across from each other. So I'm getting the two on each side. So just make sure you have four and we'll just do a connect here. And we'll just go up to the next set, do the same thing and we'll just work our way up. Okay, just like that. Check it out in perspective. So just make sure you get them on both sides. And then to uh, complete the quads, we'll just uh, connect the top to the bottom. So let's go to cut. I'm just going to cut from the vert there down to the bottom one. And we'll do the same thing on the back. Right click. Okay, so now it's quads. All right, and we have the arm piece coming out uh, the back there. So I'm just going to actually delete some of this stuff. So let's go to polygon. Again, make sure you don't back face and turn it on. And I'm just going to grab these uh, upper ones right here. So I'm getting the outside edge, the front and the back, so 13, and we'll just delete this. And let's go to edge and we'll just grab uh, these edges here. Let's also make sure we get the top one. Okay, so that guy there. Nine edges. And back in the uh, right view, we're just going to shift drag this over to clone it. So hold shift and we'll just drag over. Just going to line up with the, uh, the bottom face that's still there. Just like that, right on this edge. And let's just adjust the uh, the top here. I'm just going to grab those verts. Uh, let's turn on our edge constraints again. I'm just move this down so we kind of match the angle here. Okay, I'm not going to worry about too much. We can probably clean up the edges uh, later. So let's uh, just grab these verts down here at the bottom corner while we're at it. Should be four, and we'll just hit uh, weld. Okay, just weld this together. Let's actually make sure it went, which I don't think it did. All right, just going to zoom in here. So let's open up our weld box. I'm just going to take the uh, threshold up a bit until I see the number change. Hit OK, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. Just hit weld. All right, I just want to have two here. So that's good. All right, so let's go to uh, border. I'm just going to grab the uh, open border there around the hole, and we'll go back into the right view, and we're just going to shift drag this down as well. So let's turn off our edge constraints first, and just shift and drag down to the back. Okay, just like that, and let's uh, go back to vertex, and we'll just uh, kind of move this down. Let's actually grab all these verts right here on the end, and uh, let's see if we can do a local scale on it. So I'm just going to go to scale, change my uh, coordinate system to local, and we'll just scale these down a bit, just to make it a little more narrow. All right, let's turn that back to view, and let's just go to move, and we'll just pull this down. Just going to kind of match the uh, the bottom angle there, and let's go back up here and grab these two. Put our edge constraints back on. I'm just going to slide these down. Okay, we can probably straighten some of this stuff out. So let's just move these guys down as well. 
the center one down. Doesn't have to match the blueprint uh, exactly. Just want to kind of even everything out. So pull that down a bit. So if you want to, you can tidy this up as well. Doesn't really matter though. All right, and you can see we have that angled back. So let's just use quick slice again. Just going to uh, cut it right off right there. Click again, and we'll go back to polygon and just grab this stuff here. All right, so the 10 get in the top and bottom on both sides and we'll delete those. And let's just grab the border and we'll cap it just to fill that in. Now we're going to have to bring the uh, the bar piece out here that wraps around the back. So uh, let's go back into the uh, right view for a sec. And we're going to cut an edge right here. So let's go back to quick slice. And just go right down the center between these two edges. Cut it in. And then we'll go back to the uh, perspective view. And we can just grab these polygons here. All right, those four. You can extrude them if you want to. Or you can just delete them and then grab the border. And just shift drag on the X. Pull it out and just turn off your constraints first. All right, there we go. So we'll just pull that over. We can uh, worry about where we have it uh, after we get the rest done. So we'll just pull it over like that. And now we're gonna have to start working on the slot. So let's go into the uh, back view for a sec and go to edge. I'm just gonna grab one of these edges on the rounded part. We'll ring that, do a connect, and we'll just do uh, two segments here and just pinch them apart. Let's go maybe, uh, we'll just say 50. That should be fine. Okay, back into perspective. And I think what I might do here is just go into isolation mode to make it a little easier to see. So let's just hit Alt Q just to hide our blueprints and we can see what's going on better. So we're gonna need to create the slot obviously. So let's go to polygon. I'm just gonna turn on our back facing here and let's just grab these polygons here. All right, so I'm just going to the center part of our original uh, cylinder, those seven polys. And I'm going to actually use these to create the uh, the rounded inside. So let's go down here to detach, open that up. Just make sure you don't have uh, element or clone ticked on and we'll just say, okay. It's going to break that piece of the mesh off and become a, a separate object. So let's select it. There it is. And we'll go back to the right view. I'm just going to go to wireframe here, F3. And let's turn on our rotation and our angle snaps. And I'm just going to spin those polys 180. All right, just like that. And then uh, let's actually scale this down uniformly too. So on the triangle, we'll just scale down a bit. And there's no real set amount to go here. Let's just do maybe like 85 on the XYZ. Just want to make sure that the end of the uh, the clone faces there is kind of lined up with the center edge. Okay, and that's going to kind of give us the inside that we need, but the uh, faces are facing the wrong way right now. As you can see, the normals are flipped. So let's go back up here. All right, just going to uh, Go to element, it should select the whole piece, and then we'll just control click polygon to get a polygon selection. And then we'll go down here and hit flip. And it's gonna flip the faces over so they're facing out instead of in. And you can see that if you turn off polygon. Alright, they're facing out, that's what we want. So because we scaled it down, it's actually gonna get a little thinner than we want. As you can see here in the front view, it's not really gonna match the uh, the width of our gap. So to fix that, I'm just gonna scale uh, just on the X. All right, just scale it out a bit until it fits, just like that. All right, and then we can attach these together. So let's just go down to attach, and we'll just click on our other piece. There it goes, attached together. Let's go back in isolation mode, Alt-Q. So now we're working with one mesh, and we just have to kind of figure out how we're going to actually fill in all these holes we have. So the first thing I do is just create the top here. Um, so let's go to edge, and we'll just grab the edge on the top of the inside part and the top edge up here, and bridge it create a face and we'll do the same thing down at the bottom. Grab these two, holding control, bridge. Now for the sides here, um, you could cap that. I think I might just do it with uh, create polygon. So let's uh, go to polygon. I'm just gonna go down and turn on create. And this will actually let you draw a new polygon in. So I'm just gonna start right there on the top and we'll go down and I'm just gonna click on each vert all the way around the inside here. Okay, when you get back to where you start, you'll see a new face uh, up here. So that means it worked. All right, so let's try it on this side. Start at the bottom, go right up to the top, and then just follow the uh, curvature of the inside all the way around. 
All right, there we go. So now we can just grab uh, this border here and this border here, holding control and just hit cap. All right, so let's take a look. Okay, so we have all our uh, holes uh, filled in. Now we are going to turbo smooth this piece, and you can see we have giant end guns uh, on both sides here. So we're going to have to kind of quad this up, or at least get as many quads as we can. So let's go down here to cut, and I'm just going to cut some edges in here. So I'm going to start right up at the top here and just click on the corner, and then we'll go over here, click on that vert. Do the same on this side. All right, just to quad that top up, and we'll do the same at the bottom. Just click up here. All right, and there's a couple different ways we could we could quad up the uh, the inside here. Um, you could do vertical cuts if you want to, but uh, I'm just trying to think of the fastest way to do it. And I'm not going to worry too much about getting it all nice and pretty. I think uh, we'll just cut some in. So let's uh, maybe skip an edge here, and we'll start on the second one up, and just go across to here. Do the same on this side. Connect them up, and I don't know if we'll be able to get it uh, completely quad. I don't think we have enough uh, edges, but See how it goes. So we'll do the th same thing up here. Connect those two and these two. And now we do have one end gone right here. And it's on a flat surface, like I mentioned earlier. So it's not really going to cause us a problem. But uh, let's maybe just connect this to this and maybe this to this. All right. So we'll have a quad in the center and a triangle on top and bottom. I think that should uh, work out okay. All right. So we'll just do the same thing on this side. All right, so yeah, not awesome, but uh, should work just fine. So all we have to do now is just figure out how we're gonna actually support our shape when we add our turbo smooth. So let's go to edge. Just gonna maybe put one down the center here. So let's grab the top edge there. Just do a ring on that, we'll do a connect. Uh, we'll do two and let's just pinch that together. All right, let's go 85 on the pinch. And then let's do one right here and right here. Bring those, connect. We'll do two again. Let's just lower this down. The edges are fairly uh, hard on the uh, reference, but I don't want it to be too sharp. So let's just do maybe like 45 or so on the pinch. Two segments, no slide. That'll support these uh, outer edges. Now, for the sides here, um, the quickest way I think to do this is just do an inset. So let's go to polygon. I'm just going to turn on our back facing here, end by angle. All right, we'll grab the side face here. Uh, let's maybe grab the back one as well and the uh, two inside ones, and we'll get the inside of the hole there as well. So 69 polys, and I'm just gonna do an inset here to kind of create a support edge all the way around the shape. Okay, so inset, just make sure you're on group when you do this, and uh, we'll just go up a bit. One and a half should be fine. That'll give us a, a support edge that runs all the way around. Gonna have to add some down here in a second, but let's uh, maybe figure out how I want to do the top and the uh, the bottom here of the slot. And we want this to be pretty nice and round at the bottom, so I don't want to be cutting too many edges in because it's going to give us some uh, dents in our shape. But uh, I think we're definitely going to need one around here, so I'm just going to start right here. We'll do a ring, and let's do a connect. All right, we'll just do one for the time being. I'm just going to move that over. We might have to do a little cleanup here after, but uh, let's just do maybe negative 80 on that, and we'll say okay. It's going to be bent down on the bottom, as you can see, so let's just uh, jump into the red view, and we'll control click uh, vertex. I'm just going to hold alt and deselect everything but those bottom ones. And let's put on our edge constraints, and we'll just slide this back a bit. Right, let's turn off ignore back facing here, and then deselect everything. All right, don't worry if you get a shading error. Um, we'll fix that in a sec. So I'm just going to pull this back a bit. I think if we have it too close to this edge underneath, it's going to give us a, a sharp uh, bulge there. So I'm just going to move it back. All right, I'm just going to get rid of this. If you ever have a sh shading problem like this, um, the easiest way to get rid of it is just apply a smooth modifier to it. And you can see it uh, it goes away and then just recollapse it to uh, add the poly. Okay, so back to vertex, and we'll just put that maybe right there for now. Uh, up at the top here, I think we're going to need to probably fan it out a bit, so let's grab these guys. Just along the top, those 12, and just pull them back a bit. All right, let's turn our edge constraints on again. All right, just move it back like this. I just want to give them some space. And 
let's maybe do the same thing to the uh, inside here. So we'll do a ring around that side and a ring around this side. Let's do a connect. Actually, let's uh, cancel that for a sec. Let's just do one side at a time, just to make it easier. All right, so we'll just do a ring around this side, connect it. And I'm just gonna slide that back to maybe, maybe 40 or so. Kind of evenly spaced from the center edge. Do the same thing on this side. All right, we'll do negative 40. Say okay. And we can probably weld some of this up. So let's go to vertex and we'll turn on target weld. And I'm just gonna go down here and just kind of weld some of these together. So let's uh, go over to the center line here. And I'm just gonna leave a triangle at the top and the bottom. And we'll do the same thing on the other side, just to weld these together. We don't really need our edges to be running all over the place like that, so. Let's do the same on the outside. And we are creating triangles again, but uh, it shouldn't be too much of a problem because it's on a flat surface. All right, so just like that at the top and the bottom, uh, we're gonna have to figure out what we wanna do on the inside. I might wait a second to do that because we're gonna have to add some support this way as well. Let's maybe just grab uh, these guys here. Just gonna grab those four verts and those four on this side as well. Let's turn on edge constraints again and we'll just uh, kind of slide these back uh, just to kind of clean this up. We'll just move it back like that and if, uh, if we want to, we can come in and clean it up after. So let's just start worrying about the, uh, the top up here. I'm just gonna support this. So let's just do uh, a ring here. I'm just going to actually deselect these, and uh, I don't think we need that one selected, or this one. Just want the couple on the inside here. Um, we can probably get rid of this one as well, and that one. So just the six, the three corner ones on each side, and we'll just do a connect here. Uh, I'm going to add two segments, and we'll just pinch them apart a bit. Let's do like 60 or so, that should be fine. And we'll do the same at the bottom down here. All right, so just grab these six, connect. That should be fine, so we'll say okay. And no, this looks absolutely horrible right now. I'm just gonna actually test it by putting a turbo smooth modifier on. Do two iterations and uh, ice line. I'm just gonna turn off the edges of F4. Just wanna see how this is actually smoothing. And even though we have a, a really shitty um, edge flow right now, the final result isn't that bad. So we might not need to worry about it too much. Uh, we're gonna need some support back here. You can see we're kind of getting a flat spot up on the top here. So I might just see if I can quickly kind of clean this up. I don't want to spend too much time on it. Um, we could definitely weld some of these uh, burps together. Just gonna do a target weld here. I'm just gonna weld this up to the corner. It's gonna create a triangle, but uh, we'll see how it looks after. Just want to kind of clean it up a bit. All right, and for these ones, we can probably just weld this across to there and this across to here. And we'll just uh, collapse these ones down here. And if you wanna take a little extra time, you could probably really get this a lot nicer looking than I am. But uh, again, I don't really wanna to spend too much time on it. So I'm just gonna clean it up quickly as best I can. All right, so we'll do it like that. Um, these guys down here, Let's turn on show and resolve for a sec. That doesn't look too bad. Let's uh, try welding these down and we'll see if it, uh, if it screws it up. So I'm just gonna weld these down to the corner. This one down to the corner. All right, hit show and results. That doesn't look too bad. It's definitely not perfect, but uh, you're never really gonna see this stuff, so we don't need to be too precise. Okay, so I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Um, we'll see how the rest goes, and if we have to, we can come back in, uh, kind of clean this up. I think we can probably get rid of a few of these edges up here, though. So let's go back to target weld, and we're just gonna go into the top here. I'm just gonna maybe combine a few of these together, so let's maybe just weld this over here. All right, just like that, and we'll do the same thing down the bottom here. Just gonna maybe add one more edge loop around here. 
So let's ring, we'll do a connect. Let's just do one in the center. And then I'm just gonna get rid of some of the edges the same way. So just weld towards the center like that. And we should be able to take out these four. All right, let's loop those. They should go around to the top and we can just uh, control backspace them out. I'm just gonna cut across here. And just remove these two, just so it's a little less dense. And then we're gonna have to support the corner here, so let's do another uh, ring around here. We'll do a connect, and we'll just slide this down to the inside corner. Let's go maybe like 90, and then we'll need one this way as well. So let's just do another one. And we'll just pinch that in. All right, so yeah, no masterpiece, but it should be okay. All right, so let's do a ring around this way and we'll just do another connect, two segments. And we'll just pinch them out. All right, maybe around uh, 85 or 90, should be fine. And let's just hit show and result. And we'll just see how it's looking. Okay, you can see we got some problems down here, which we're gonna have to fix. Inside doesn't look too bad. It's definitely good enough for what we're gonna be uh, doing with it, but uh, this is going to need some work down here. So let's uh, turn off show and result. We'll just uh, zoom in here and see what's going on. And these dents are just being caused by these uh, edges so close together. So let's maybe try a different approach here. I'm just going to maybe try welding it up here instead. And we'll just get rid of these and see if that helps. Probably going to get a little bit of a dip either way, but uh, I'll take these out and then just hit show and result. Okay, so we fixed the dips there. Um, we got a bit of a flat spot uh, again, so let's just jump into the right view. And we'll just see if we can kind of quickly clean this up. All right, so I'm gonna zoom in at the top here. And let's uh, turn off our edge constraints for a second. I'm just gonna grab these spurts right here. And I'm just gonna pull them forward a bit and push them up. Just wanna kind of maintain the curve there so it's a little smoother of a transition. Uh, these guys here, let's actually put our edge constraints back on and we'll just slide these back just a bit. All right, that's a little better. Uh, might actually move these guys up. So let's turn these off for a sec and just go up a tiny little bit. It doesn't have to be much, just, just a bit. And we'll do the same thing down here. Let's just grab these ones. All right, turn our uh, edge constraints off and I'm just gonna move them down a bit and also back a little bit. And whenever you have edges too close together, you're definitely gonna get a flat spot. So sometimes you can fix it by just kind of giving them more space. All right, so just kind of even everything out. Let's see how that looks. All right, it's not perfect, but I think it's good enough. Okay, so I think that's all we need to do. And if you want to, you can definitely clean up the inside a bit better. Uh, it's kind of a mess how I left it but uh, I think I should move on, so I'll leave it for now. So we'll just create the other side of it. So let's go into the back view. I'm just gonna exit isolation mode here. Just gonna zoom in here. You can see we have that uh, inset face still. So to get rid of that, let's actually just chop this off. So I'm gonna use quick slice again. I'm just gonna cut right on the center line of the print there, straight down, right click, and we'll just get rid of this stuff here on the uh, inner edge, these guys. Just delete those and uh, we just want to make sure we're not going to have a problem when we actually add our symmetry. So to do that, let's also add a symmetry modifier on top. All right, we're going to do this on the uh, Z axis. I'm just going to actually open up the roller and select the mirror here. And I'm just going to go and open up the move tool and just right click the X spinner. Just to snap the, uh, the mirror over to the center point. Okay, so we'll close that. Turn off the mirror. And we'll just see how that's looking. So not too bad, uh, good enough for sure. So let's just right click and unhide all and we'll just see how this looks with the rest of our pieces in here. All right, make sure it's gonna fit, looks like it will. All right, so that's good enough for that piece. So let's just do a quick save here and we'll just keep moving. 